Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through microservices and basically this is going to be a three-part series where I start off by showing you what a microservice is, how you make a microservice and how you make these different services work together. Now this is a disclaimer and I'm going to be extremely opinionated about this because the fact of the matter is that the industry has still not settled on a definitive like a actual definition of what exactly a microservice is. This is what I am used to working with when it comes to microservices and just service oriented architectures and these are just my personal experiences. There are a few other ways you can do this. There's two main favorite, like my, I have two favorite ways of doing microservices. This is the more common one and my goal here is not to make you a master of every aspect of microservices because it's a very broad topic but I want you to understand what they are how you make them and how you actually are orchestrate them together so in in yeah it, that's basically what we're going for here so let's start off with the theory behind a microservice so a microservice the idea is virtually if you look at this side panel here you see that I have a directory called books books search videos web and then I have some weird files here so in a traditional monolithic application these would be simple modules inside of my application but in a microservices or architecture you might actually notice something each of these are uh, these are node modules or rather node projects these are full-fledged applications each one of these directories is actually an entire system in of itself it has its own server it has its own source, its own dependencies, all of that. So what you're looking at here is not a project or well, it is a project, but it's a project of projects. And that's where the micro part of all of this comes in. Th imagine that each module here was massive. Let's say that these like there you had like a ton of people who needed to work on the books section and a ton of people working on the video section. So what this allows you to do is that instead of putting all of that code into one single project you slice these these natural pieces up into very small projects and then you make them work together as a whole uh, as a distributed system now I will tell you and this is where we're gonna go through my notes here I am highly opinionated on this and you may you're absolutely like open you it's okay to disagree here but th this is these are my experiences I'm not pulling this out of my ass I have done this more than a few times and I have burned my fingers on a few projects so it took me a while to actually understand these things so hopefully this will be useful to you first and foremost the stuff that you're gonna see in this series is not prop like this do not do this for a real project of this size this is just for learning this is if this is a small project all of this code should be in a monolithic application there is no reason for you to slice up something this small into microservices you will just introduce a lot of complexity which I hope will be illustrated because I'm going to show you how things get very complicated very quickly it, I'm not trying to scare you I'm just saying that it's if you can stay with a monolithic a monolithic application it's usually simpler so a microservice, this is my opinion, my opinion, a microservice architecture is for big projects with a lot of people, period. You don't want to do microservices for a small project. And people will tell you that you can do small scale projects and it is absolutely true. I mean, I did micro, that was one of my biggest mistakes. I tried to ma do a, like my own start, make my own startup work with microservices and it I actually did the problem was that it got so complicated so very quickly and there was so much maintenance and overhead that it took more time to just orchestrate everything and make everything work together than it took to actually write the code so to me the analogy is that yes although they take an anthill for example you you know you 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 solve the problem in proportion to the problem the solution has to stand in proportion to the problem so yeah you can remove I, this is what I wrote basically it is possible to remove an anthill with a nuclear bomb but uh, it's not really proportional to the problem right that's exactly how I think about microservices they are not for a small project they are not the right tool for the job 
So let's talk about Docker containers. Docker containers are not microservices. This is a very common misconception. Docker containers are absolutely awesome. I love them, but you don't have to do microservices to use containers. Docker and Docker containers are not the same thing as microservices. And I'll show you in a minute why. So the, as I said earlier, this is the most common architecture that we're going to walk through. But there is one other that I, I'm personally very fond of, which is a queue-based system for container-to-container -container communications. In the next video, I'm going to show you some risks you will find with microservices and some problems that actually very large companies have gotten wrong. I mean, I'm not even you don't you don't think that microservices just is just complicated for small you know small develop like beginner developers. There are large companies who have gotten it wrong, and it has cost them millions and millions and millions. So here are my three-year rule of thumb for microservices. First and foremost, Docker containers are not microservices. And I think Docker containers are good for almost any project size. You should be using Docker containers in general. I really like them. Microservices are good for big companies with a lot of code and people. That's the idea of them. I think that the problem that microservices solve is that they allow a lot of people to work on really large systems, but they are not so good for small projects. And the sweet spot, in my opinion, is that you have a monolithic application where you put your monolith inside a Docker container and then you put your databases in a container. Now let's talk about this. So I have, I've set up my computer using with Docker. So let's do Docker PS, this stands for Docker processes. As we can see now, I'm not running any Docker containers, but if we do Docker images, we can see here that I have a list of all the images that I have saved to my file system. So these are my containers and these are the ones we're going to use in this series. So first and foremost, let's look at these, these images here. So I have an image called Node, one that's called Nginx and one that's called Mongo. These are so-called base containers. These containers are hosted and provided by the organizations that represent these different technologies. So MongoDB has their own contain their own image. Nginx has one and Node has one provided as well. And what's powerful about these base containers is that my containers, the ones that I use to create my own Docker, like my own services and my own my own architecture, I build on top of these. So in this container, I know that MongoDB is running and in this one, this one it's Nginx and then I use this one. This is the most important one because this container holds Node. Inside of this container, I'll, I will have access to Node. And what's beautiful about this is that these are all Node servers that are running in my services. So I basically use the base container called which holds Node to build my and I copy in my files and then I set everything up and then I have you know I, I, I lay all of my code on top of that container that's the general idea anyway so what we can do now is that let's do something like this let's do docker run IT stands for for interactive terminal basically so that we can see what's actually happening here and then we set specify a port so I want to map my laptops port 3000 to the containers port 3000 because my contain all of my containers run on port 3000 inside of rather all my services run on port 3000 inside of the container if this doesn't make sense to you don't worry about it we we'll, we will cover all of this in the next video i just wanted to show you the idea so here we are we have a port anything else where yes, we need to do microservices and let's do no not books let's do web so running on port 3000. So what just happened now is that I'm actually getting the log output from inside this container. So if I now go to localhost 3000, ta-da! Now I'm actually serving on port 3000. And this is our very simple web application that we're going to work with. This is butt ugly. I know, I know it's butt ugly, but this is not a video about making nice interfaces. This is a video about microservices. So there we are and we will kill that and we can see that none of the processes are running. Now, imagine that we wanted to start, like this is not that useful, right? Because now we're locking ourselves into 
basically having to run one single service at a time. That's not what we want. Let's say that we wanted to w use one of these like books, search or videos. Now these have a dependency to MongoDB, so they need Mongo in order to work. So let's try that out. Docker run and this time we're going to do dash D for demonize, which basically means that this is going to run in the background, this process. So let's do a port mapping to to see two seven oh seven seventeen something like that yeah yeah something like that and then do mongo I think that's correct yeah so what we can see now is that this list here represents all the processes that we have running right now MongoDB is actually running on port twenty seven oh seventeen in my on my laptop and it's mapped to the containers port 27017. So what I can do now is that inside, as we can see here, I'm in the books directory. And if I list here, I see that I'm actually in one of my microservices. So let's do npm start. Just ignore this deprecation warning. It's, a, it's an old version of the library. So you can see that it's running on port 3000. If I now refresh, ta-da! And now I'm actually connected to I'm connected I'm running my server and it's connected to to this container here that's how it works so if I now kill that and I do docker stop mongo no sorry docker ps docker stop and you can see that this container ID is what I want to hook into but I only really need to do a partial match so I can do e8 instead of the whole thing so docker ps now we don't have Mongo running anymore, so let's do npm start. And boom, everything blows up because the connection cannot be established because I don't have MongoDB running anymore. Now, this is all well and dandy, but it's, uh, and I'll show you what we are going to work towards. So docker compose, let's see, docker compose up, I think, right? Yeah. So what's happening now is that Docker Compose is a separate tool to Docker. It's just going to help me spin everything up. And you can see all this log output you're seeing now is a, like a fleet of all these services that I have. But we can do something even nicer than that. Let's kill all of those and do something like this. Let's do demonize. So that we're going to run all of our services together. And then let's do C Docker PS. And here we are. This is microservices in essence. We have all of these containers that are in themselves, hold, each container holds its own service, its own thing. It's responsible for its own thing, piece, small piece of the entire system. And thanks to Docker and Docker Compose and tools like Kubernetes, we can spin all of these service, small APIs up as a fleet of different services and then they can talk to each other to create a really, really large system. And that's basically the idea of microservices. You have tiny, tiny applications that do one thing and they, they do one thing well and then they, just, then they talk to each other to, to provide the different functionality that, that you're looking for. That's basically the, what a microservice is. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how you make a microservice and we'll take it from there. Hopefully this was useful to you.